Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here discussing some more Warhammer combat cards and we're taking another look at Mad Imp's meta deck list. This time we're focusing on the Space Marines who have so many cards in their collection. Currently there are over 160 Space Marine cards in the game. A lot of them do have overlapping roles, but we'll see uh, a number of newer cards that I'm less familiar with and uh, many players may not have at all in their collection. Uh, but again, this is assuming you have access to all cards unlocked at a high level and a 200 point deck, so we'll start off looking at the one warlord that everyone has, and it's none other than Captain Acheron, who has pretty weak attack stats, uh, he's fairly tanky because he has shields, but it's a special rule that is uh, extremely good, uh, despite being, you know, the, the most basic warlord that you start off with. So it's a defensive rule that will save each of your cards one time from death, leaving them at 5 HP remaining, uh, but it actually kind of turns into an offensive rule as well because uh, since your units can counterattack after they are saved by the Iron Halo, they'll actually be doing more damage than they normally would. So of course if you want to see the Iron Halo activate the maximum number of times you'll want to include 8 bodyguards. In this deck we only have 6 bodyguards, but we're running 3 very powerful legendaries. Torgerdon with shield and big game hunter, he has really solid stats, uh, just really tanky, lots of damage output, so I do use him quite a bit. Now uh, we've got Belial with Inspiring Presence and Shields as well, very uh, tough while pro providing that uh, supporting aura. And we've got Astarath the Grim at 50 points. Uh, he did get nerfed recently, uh, but he still deals a massive amount of damage. He's got a really big Furious Charge and Fear, so just another tough damage dealer. And then to keep them alive even longer, we've got the uh, Death Knight with Taunt, and then the 10 point Tech Marine with Medicae. And then uh, 22 points, we got the Chaplain with Fear and Target Acquired. I guess Target Acquired could be useful if you need to really take down something uh, quickly, but uh, I don't really like this card very much, and I actually never use it in any of my decks, so it's an interesting choice there. I do think that having more attack types with Captain Acheron is better, because, uh, again, because you're able to retaliate uh, when your cards are saved by the Iron Halo. Uh, if you're up against like a ranged or psychic deck, you won't get as many chances to retaliate uh, necessarily when you're just running melee cards like you are here. But speaking of melee, let's move on to Logan Grimnar, the legendary Space Marine Warlord who is able to cleave through multiple enemy cards at once with a special rule. The Warlord himself is very strong, he's got a really big melee attack with a furious charge and quite a bit of health as well. And of course we're just running a bunch of really strong melee cards in the deck. So again we've got Astarath the Grim. And the other legendary is actually just a brand new one. It's the Grey Wolf's Dreadnought Murder Fang. Uh, he has a pretty weak ranged attack but a very powerful melee attack with Furious Charge and Berserk and a ton of health. I've never seen the card in action yet but uh, I can imagine it would be very good comboing with Logan. Uh, we've also got the Cyber Wolf at 8 points with melee Scout. And uh, the 11 point Death Watch Vanguard Veteran, which I still think is too strong for its cost. It's, it deals like over 70 damage and has Death Blow, uh, but yeah, very good with Logan. Uh, we've got the Tech Marine for some additional healing. And finally, the 6 point Grey Wolf with Death Blow, uh, which is a pretty weak card, but uh, again, Death Blow does combo pretty well with Logan. So overall, uh, I don't know, I think Space Marines do have plenty of other options, uh, really powerful melee cards that uh, can do the job nearly as well as this deck. Uh, most of the power here is like centralized into those two legendaries and then Logan himself. Uh, for me, since I have neither of those legendaries at a high enough level, uh, I'm running like Torgerdon, Belial, and uh, like Corsar Khan, the epic card with uh, target acquired and big game hunter. He combos nicely with Logan, so yeah, there are plenty of other options available. Now let's look at the other melee specialist, Helbrecht who has the potential to make uh, his cards extremely powerful with a series of buffs, each one 15% every time you kill something with a melee attack. So again, you do want strong melee units in here. Unsurprisingly, we have Astarath the Grim. Uh, the other big legendary here is the 55 point Commander Dante, who has Berserk and Inspiring Presence. And uh, he's a pretty beastly though at the higher levels, like just incredibly powerful, both ranged and melee. Uh, but I only have him at level 1, so I've never used him myself. And then the other legendary bodyguard is Kai Van Shrike, who has outflank and target acquired for his traits. Uh, he has solid stats as well, 
Um, I just have him at a pretty high level, so I do sometimes use him, but uh, I don't know if he's really the greatest card. Uh, the others, of course, are just support units. We got the Deathwing Knight with Taunt, Tech Marine with Medicaid, and then the Cyber Wolf with the Melee Scout. Uh, Helbrecht himself has Inspiring Presence and Anti-Infantry for his secondary trait, so he's not quite as strong as he used to be when he had Furious Charge. Um, I think, yeah, overall, this deck is uh, it's, it's decent. Um, I think with Helbrecht, because his special rule actually buffs all of your attack stats, uh, it can be better, I, I guess, at least on paper, when your cards have multiple attack stats. So if you're running, like, maybe Mephiston, who has a Psychic Attack as well, uh, that's another option. But, uh, yeah, once again, Space Marines have a lot of really powerful legendaries, so uh, whichever ones you have at the highest level uh, may just be the, the best ones to run with him. Moving on to the ranged specialist for Space Marines, we've got uh, Brother Lieutenant Tolmeron, who increases the ranged attack of your cards whenever you deploy another card. So you'll just want a, a few really powerful ranged units, ideally, I think. So in this one, uh, some interesting options again. Uh, we have just one legendary bo bodyguard, and that is the Land Raider, which I have seen in campaign mode, and that thing is a monster. It has big game hunter and ranged scout and just deals a ridiculous amount of damage, also has a huge amount of health. And then we've got the Black Star, which has Barrage. Um, it's just a rare card, so interesting choice there. Uh, Space Marines actually, I mean, they do have some really powerful ranged units, but uh, a lot of them don't actually have dual traits. Like, they're either rare or common, but still able to deal massive amounts of damage with Tolmeron. Uh, and then the rest of the cards in there are just there for support. So we got, once again, uh, the Deathwing Knight with Taunt, uh, the Tech Marine with Medicaid, and then we've got the 5-point Scout with uh, Ranged Scout, and then the 25-point uh, Blade Guard Ancient. That's an interesting choice there. And he's got Inspiring Presence and Shield as a secondary trait, so that guy, I guess if you're running him in this deck, you would just deploy him last after all the other support cards are gone. But by that time, I think your, your two ranged units will just be dealing incredible amounts of damage. So this does look like it would be a fun deck to run. Next up is Grandmaster Voldus, who has a pretty similar special rule to Tolmeron, except it buffs your psychic attacks instead. Uh, Voldus himself doesn't actually have that much health, considering his cost. Uh, he does have decent damage output. Of course, you're going to want to run pretty much all psychers. So we've got, for the legendary... Uh, Tigurius, who has uh, shields. He doesn't really have much health for his cost, but yeah, the shields will keep him alive for a pretty good amount of time, and he's got a very powerful uh, psychic attack with Warp Surge as well. Then at 37 points, we've got Castellan Crow, who has Inspiring Presence and Anti-Infantry now for a secondary trait. Uh, he's got all three attack types, so yeah, he'll just be buffing the rest of your guys even further. To the right of him, we've got the 22-point Raven Guard Librarian, uh, who has a pretty powerful Psychic Attack and Psychic Scout. I think he might actually be the only Psychic Scout in the game, uh, but yeah, it's just some more burst damage output there. Uh, we got the 15-point Grey Knight Warrior with Psychic Link, who, who isn't uh, very strong, so of course you'll just want to deploy him, uh, just basically to get the, the buff from the special rule. And at 29 points, we've got the uh, Librarian with Psionic Blast and S Shields. Uh, that's uh, another relatively new card, but definitely a really solid uh, damage dealer. And the Psionic Blast, of course, is a really powerful trait. And then, once again, we've got that 10-point Tech Marine. We see it in pretty much every deck. It's just such a good, uh, valuable card for it, the low cost. that You, you want to run it pretty much all the time. Next up, we've got Watch Captain Artemis. I'm not really a big fan of the Warlord because a special rule, although it potentially can deal a lot of damage to high health targets, uh, it, it's just the random nature of it means it's just not very reliable. Uh, the Warlord himself does hit pretty hard. He's been buffed a number of times uh, over the years, and he does have Deadshot for his secondary trait, which is very useful for taking down an enemy Warlord. But we're seeing a lot of Psychers here again. Uh, I've got Tigurius and then Njal Stormcaller. Uh, who has a pretty powerful Psionic Blast at this level and Inspiring Presence. Then we got the uh, Librarian with Scout. And then the one Epic Bodyguard at 25 points is a pretty new card, who has all three attack types, Warp Surge and Berserk. So a very interesting combination of traits, but uh, actually quite strong. 
Uh, we've got two healers now, the Tech Marine and then the uh, Grey Knight's Paladin. Apothecary, who I don't really like using because he's just a little bit more expensive and has very low damage output. Uh, we've also got the Deathwing Knight with Taunt and then the six point uh, Scout with uh, Melee Scout. So for this deck you'd be going Psychic most of the time and then you could end with either a charged up ranged or melee attack once uh, Artemis deploys. I think it would be pretty powerful though. And then finally we've got Azrael, a legendary warlord, but a fairly new one so many players might not have him at a very high level. He starts off very weak, uh, but uh, at this level the warlord himself would be quite strong. Like nearly 300 health, uh, 70 ranged attack, and 100 damage, and that's even without uh, his inspiring presence and then anti-infantry for his dual traits. Uh, we've got three legendary bodyguards, Mephiston, we're finally seeing him for the first time. It's kind of surprising because he is a very powerful card. Got uh, Fear and Death Blow. Uh, we've got Belial again with the Inspiring Presence and Shields. Uh, Kaivan Shrike with the Target Acquired and Outflank. And once again, uh, the same Tech Marine with Medicaid, Deathwing Knight with Taunt, and then the Apothecary with Medicaid. So, so just a lot of extra healing and uh, defense here. And then the, the option of going uh, with several different attack types, because with Azrael you want to switch which attack you're going with uh, each turn, so this does give you some flexibility there. I still don't really like uh, playing as Azrael very much though, I think he's maybe the least fun out of all the Space Marine Warlords. But the 25% uh, boost to the attack stats is pretty significant, especially if you're able to keep your cards alive for a long time. So definitely some interesting choices for the bodyguards in these Space Marine decks uh, that many players may not have access to, but let me know what you think of these builds, and if you have any builds that have really worked very well with you with the Space Marines, let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.